So I'm Professor Cathy Willis and I work at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. One of the issues with our current crop plants is that they've gone through years, if not thousands of years, of breeding and therefore you've had this massive genetic bottlenecking going on because people select for the traits that give a bigger yield and nicer looking plant, sweeter fruit. And as a result of that you've ended up with a very, very depulperate gene pool for our crops. And linked to that then, they're not plants, our crops currently are not very resilient to climatic perturbations. So what we need to be doing is finding the crop wild relatives, the ancestors, the cousins to those crops in the wild, which have been around for thousands of years and have withstood multiple climate changes and breed that resilience, those resilient traits, back into our current crops. The age of the plant hunter isn't dead. I think that's the most important thing. We tend to just view molecular, you know, the molecular aspects of plants and, and DNA and everything's moved on. But we still absolutely need to be out there in the field identifying where the plants are. There are vast areas of the globe we still don't know what plants are there. So Angola, for example, is a real black hole when it comes to our knowledge about species occurrence, plant species occurrence. So it's really down to places like Kew to be going out there searching those areas and seeing what plants we have and then working out what their relationship is both through their their morphological traits but also their molecular traits what their relationship is to our present day crops and other plants yams are one of the ones which q has had a lot of work going on trying to find the the new varieties new species of yam that are out there Many of them are in Africa, um, particularly in East Africa, and also Madagascar. Madagascar seems to be a real hot spot for yams, but also for different varieties of coffee as well, and different species of coffee. In 1985, I think we knew about 40 to 50, spe about 40 to 50 species of coffee, and we now know of about 128 different species of coffee. And many of those are starting to give us real hope for the future because coffee is one of the coffee we drink, coffee arabica, is a plant that's been shown that if you do the climate modelling for it, it's not very sensitive to drought and therefore we may, may well lose the suitable climatic spaces for coffee arabica. So therefore one of the key things is to find where are the other areas to find new species of coffee. And Madagascar seems to have, I think it's 39 species of coffee in Madagascar alone. And one of those is a coffee that grows up to 40 degrees C, it seems to be remarkably drought resistant. Another species, the species found in, um, in Mauritius, which is actually naturally caffeine free. To get more genetic diversity into our crops, we have to go back to the wild. We have to go back and find our wild crop relatives and start to look at the, what genetic diversity they have and start to breed that back into our crops. That really is one of the only answers to, well, that is the only answer to many of our problems with our crops. Um, we can do a lot of genetic modification, but I think we've got a, we've got a naturally occurring process and naturally occurring populations that have the key to success.